So good afternoon, entrepreneurs. The, um, I won't keep you too long from the lunch. <clears throat> I'm happy because entrepreneurship has the future. Um, <clears throat> many countries, including Turkey, are, are changing their economic model. The economic model was very much that you hire knowledge from foreign companies and you have many semi-skilled or unskilled workers who are happy to do as you tell them, and that's how you build a rich country. But the model is going to change, and I think there will not be so many jobs left uh, in the 4040 model that uh, Erhan Erkut was, was talking about this morning. So the gap will be filled by entrepreneurs. Now, most of you are in an enterprise that you can scale up, but the majority of entrepreneurs will not be scaling up, they will just be self-employed. Think also of older people. This uh, idea of retirement being later and later, I don't believe so much in it. I think retirement is not going to happen at all. You will just work less and less and more for yourself and not in a, in a fixed job. So entrepreneurs come in many kinds, and one kind is particularly interesting, and that's the woman entrepreneur, but we'll keep that for the last. The, um, <clears throat> the big change is now in, in, in funding that you see around. There's a traditional model of the, what they call the friends and family and whatever, angels, VC, IPO, and so on. It's more complicated. And I think one of the reasons for this is that to find, found an enterprise, the startup is, is, is not the crucial phase. We know, we know very well now how to, how to do a startup. As you have heard this morning, there is a lot of knowledge about it. There are many books about it. Uh, if you ask why all these big companies situated in Silicon Valley, <coughs> uh, why we have startup facilities of, of similar quality all over the world, the answer is that in Silicon Valley, they're good in scaling up. So scaling up is the buzzword. And maybe um, I have to talk to Burak that the next one should not be called Startup Istanbul, but Scale Up Istanbul. Uh, and that's where it's going to be. <clears throat> now, many startups need an ecology to get growing in. It's, it's a difficult to start an enterprise of your own. I did it all by myself, uh, a management consulting company which grew large and then I sold it. This was not a sort of thing that you can scale up to a great extent. Um, but most enterprises need an ecology. And I think for the technology-based companies, it will be obviously the universities. Um, <clears throat> I've been visiting Turkey for the last 10 years, maybe five times a year on average, <clears throat> and see many changes in university systems because I get invitations to talk um, <clears throat> because of my book. Uh, but still the situation, entrepreneurship and university is a very difficult combination. And I often have a feeling if I talk to university managers, directors and so on, I'm trying to, uh, to teach cats how to swim. It, it is not a natural combination. So there we still have a long way to go. And actually, if you think of it, there are very few places in the world where deep science and entrepreneurship and what comes with it are going together. The Stanford area is certain one, Boston area is certainly one, um, <clears throat> Cambridge in UK is certainly one. Well, and then you have to, to search. There, of course, there are more. So I think the role of the universities will only become more important, but they're not yet aware of it, and they're certainly not acting it. A big driver, I think, will be artificial intelligence, and it will offer a lot of opportunities for new entrepreneurs. Um, we have had robots, and they have outsourced a lot of labor in the in the blue, under the blue collar workers. If you see a car factory nowadays, you see hardly anyone working there. It's all robotized. <clears throat> now, I think with the level of artificial intelligence we have, it can, 
it can uh, replace white collar work. And there is space for a lot of applications. Uh, for instance, uh, I had a new passport, so I had to apply for a new visa, uh, which you do online um, for, for Turkey. But it's a cumbersome process. It takes maybe 10 minutes just to pay, to pay 20, 20 euro. I think if you have an interactive system that you can talk to, it will be much faster. And this is just one example. There are millions of examples of tasks that is done by bureaucracy, by government, and also many other tasks, HRM uh, procedures in enterprises and so on, where you can replace labor by <coughs> applications that are based on artificial intelligence. There's a lot to be earned. But there's more to it. If you now make an app and it works nicely, uh, you think you're there and you, you, you bring it to the market. Well, I think you're only halfway there. Once the app works, you have to make it more, uh, you know, how to say, communicable, uh, easier to talk to, to work with, and so on. Uh, a lot of apps are not so easy to navigate. Maybe if you're nerds, but most people are not nerds. So I think there's also a big role for, um, uh, for, for entrepreneurs to, to, to use the artificial intelligence and bring it to the market in the form of applications. And again, there are lots of examples. So finally, women entrepreneurs. Um, it is amazing if you, if you realize how different men and women are. Um, <clears throat> Women have a totally different way of competing than men. Women have one very big advantage, and that's they can listen. Men are not very good at it, including myself. So <coughs> uh, I think this women entrepreneurship now comes up very much, not, not only in high-tech companies, but also in self-employed um, <coughs> activities. Uh, I was involved in a in a large project some years ago that we did together with TESC in Turkey. TESC is the, well, I would say the SME organization. I think officially it's called Union of Tradesmen and Craftsmen or something. But they're very large. They have offices all over the country. And we trained about 10,000 women. <clears throat> Roughly half of them wanted to become entrepreneur. The other half were entrepreneur but needed additional courses. And the testimonials of these women is, is just fantastic to see. They feel liberated. Uh, they, they, they feel they have a future apart from just sitting at home. Um, and I think this may be very far from people like you. It is much is rural, of course, but also in cities. But it is uh, very significant uh, as a cultural phenomenon, but also economic, uh, that they get an opportunity to join the, uh, the entrepreneurship. So this is uh, three trends I wanted to share with you, and that ends my contribution. Thank you very much.